You don't have to step back to move forward. I've already tweeted that to LG, and so when they use it, at least you kids know where it came from. My handle is Jonathan Blade. LG has been my go-to for a number of years for myself and for my family, so there was no chance that my new phone wasn't going to be an LG phone. My only real question was LG V20, LG G6, or wait for the V30. In the end, I thought it would be nice to have a phone that was slightly more pocketable than my LG G4, and so here we are, and so far, no regrets. As a quality product, the LG G6 stands tall in the land of giants. It is beautifully constructed with a Gorilla Glass 3 front, an aluminum frame, Gorilla Glass 5 on the back. I would say it's most like a more substantial Galaxy S6. Now, I'm not terribly comfortable with the idea of a phone that has glass as the dominant build material, but I always slap a tempered glass screen protector and a cruiser light bug droid case on my phones as soon as I unbox them anyway, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get the specs out of the way. The G6 nearly clears the 2017 price of premium admission. It has an excellent QHD display that gets plenty bright, supports HDR video, and also does screen off notifications. Uh, it also has a 3300 milliamp hour battery that so far easily gets me through my workday and then some. It has a quick and accurate back mounted fingerprint sensor, the standard 4 gigs of RAM, two 13 megapixel main cameras, uh, and while only one of them has OIS, they both support 4K video. But we'll get back to these. Uh, it has IP68 water and dust resistance, quick charging for both its USB-C wired and wireless charging, NFC, SD card support for cards with capacities up to two terabytes. Those don't even exist. Hmm. Uh, support for gigabit LTE, what? So you're saying, I'm sure that this sounds awesome. But alas, we have reached the top of the Bleeding Edge coaster. It's going down. The G6 uses Qualcomm's 2016 flagship SoC, the Snapdragon 821, instead of 2017 Snapdragon 835. Now this is obviously not a deal breaker for me, and you probably won't see a difference but it is still a black mark against LG for not having the new hotness in its flagship. The screen being Gorilla Glass 3 is also an odd decision. I would guess that the margins were tight, so LG thought that Gorilla Glass 3 was good enough. But from some of the drop videos that I've seen, it is not nearly good enough. The base storage option, in fact, is the only US storage option at 32 gigs, which is getting close to being the modern 16 gigs. None of these break my LG G6 experience. In my daily usage, the battery life and performance have both been fantastic. The main event for most modern smartphones is the camera. Evidently, they're using older sensors with some on paper underpowered specs, but you wouldn't know it from looking at the pictures. The G6 takes pictures that look like my G4's pictures did after I had punched them up with Snapseed or Instagram, and I dig it. The real star is the second super wide angle camera. The tag from the beginning of the video is all about this, and so am I. Super wide shots are minimally fish eyed at the edges, but the convenience of taking everything in without having to physically reframe a shot cannot be overstated. Check out these comparison shots with one of the big dogs, the iPhone 7. Lovely. But what isn't quite as lovely is the front facing camera. It does a passable job, but at 4 megapixels it is not nearly as capable as the 8 megapixel front facer from my LG G4. 
It doesn't stand up well in comparison to the iPhone 7's front camera either, but at least it has the option to go wide. So what's left? Um, the speaker is mono, but it sounds acceptably good. It doesn't distort too much at high volumes, and the bass is fine. Uh, I've heard a lot of complaints from the tech press concerning LG's choices for their Android skin. Something about a lack of aesthetic cohesion or whatever, but I'm fully convinced that no normal person and very few tech enthusiasts could really care. It's, it's stable and functional, it's fast, it offers a lot of stock options for user customization, including the terrible option to completely remove the app drawer. And if you really hate it, there are always other launchers that you can use, none of which, in my experience, will run as fluidly as stock LG. Is that it? Probably not, but you get the idea. The, with the LG G6, you are getting a flagship phone with just under flagship specs, but at, and this is key, under flagship prices. T-Mobile is selling the G6 for 500 that's 150 less than the current base iPhone and 250 less than the current base Galaxy S8. From the perspective of a regular consumer, the LG G6 can do everything those phones can do with the value add of a super widescreen camera while being a significantly better value. Will this sell units? Uh, it hasn't sold a ton so far, as LG's brand cache is a puddle compared to Samsung and Apple's commercial ocean, but if they consider my tagline, <laughs> Thanks for watching.